2,000 calories a day. That's about what they tell us we should be consuming. Does that apply to runners? Does that apply to men, women? We have these fancy fitness tracker watches now, these apps on our phones that record how much we're eating. Are they accurate? Are they telling us and giving us the complete picture? I'm gonna make it easy for you. We're gonna dive in and do a little math. So how do we determine our daily caloric needs? Three things. First one, basal metabolic rate. That's basically the energy that you're burning while you're doing your everyday stuff, not including exercise. Second one is that exercise component. So whether that's a 30 minute strength training session or an hour long run, you have to factor in those calories that you're burning. Third is the thermic effect of your food. It's a little trickier, but it's basically the energy required to digest the food that you're eating. For example, celery versus rice. Those have different kind of thermic effects. Beans versus steak. So you, the harder and more complicated a food is to digest, the greater its thermic effect. All right, this is the portion of the video where you're gonna wanna grab a pen and some paper because I'm going to be giving you a lot of numbers and a way to calculate in a general form your caloric needs. So if it's a rest day and you're not doing a lot of activity, you want to consume 12 to 14 calories per pound or 26 to 31 calories per kilogram. If you're doing about an hour of moderate intensity activity, that would be 15 to 17 calories per pound or 33 to 37 calories per kilogram. Now, if you're upping that intensity and that duration, an hour to two hours of moderate to intense activity, you're going to want to consume 18 to 24 calories per pound or 40 to 53 calories per kilogram. Finally, if you're doing that marathon long run or you're ultra training and you're doing several hours of activity, or if you have a morning session, maybe a morning run and either an evening run or an evening strength training session, that's when you're gonna really up that caloric intake and that's 24 to 29 calories per pound or 53 to 63 calories per kilogram. Women, you wanna start on the low end of all of those numbers I just gave you. And men, you wanna start on the high side. I know, don't shoot the messenger, it's not fair. That's just the way it works, people. I don't make the rules, I just follow them. Now, if you are going to be using these fitness trackers, as handy as they are, they're give or take, so either plus or minus, about 16% accuracy. If you want a very highly accurate test, you can go to a lab where they'll calculate your body's caloric needs. It's a little more expensive though than just doing the math that I gave you. But the math is a good place to start. Check it against those fitness trackers and meet somewhere in the middle, use that as a starting point, and then you can go up plus or minus depending on how you're feeling throughout the day. All right, I have just thrown a lot of numbers at you. So let's walk through a practical example and give you a better idea of what I'm talking about. Let's take Nora, she's a 130 pound female runner. Her resting metabolic rate is 1350. She goes, for a, goes out for a run and burns about 700 calories. That would mean to maintain her weight, her daily caloric requirements would be about 2,100 calories. Now, let's say she's working with a sports nutritionist and they've determined that she can safely lose about five pounds to hit that performance goal, that race weight goal that she has. The way that we determine losing weight safely is if you eliminate about 300 to 500 calories a day from your diet. So if she's taking off about 400 calories, that would put her at 1,700 calories for the day. If Nora has been under fueling, as a lot of female runners do, and she needs to gain weight, again, we use that number 300 to 500 calories a day to safely add weight on. That would be if we gave her about 400 additional calories, she would want to consume 2,500 calories a day so that she gets back to that healthy weight and can be running and performing the way that she wants to. All right, now that you know your daily caloric needs, let's make an action plan. The first step would be to keep track of what you're eating. 
You can either use a food journal or one of those food tracking apps. This will give you a better idea of how much you're consuming and where there might be some touch points, whether you're not getting the nutrients that you might need, that could be protein, fats in your diet. It can also tell you where some touch points are in terms of where you might be overeating or eating at the wrong times. All right, step two is to make a plan. As they say, fail to plan, plan to fail. Write out your weekly meal plan, just like you would with a training plan and you have those key sessions. You wanna include those key foods that you need. So the healthy fats, proteins, and complex carbohydrates, but also if you're trying to add in certain nutrients to your diet, maybe you're trying to eat more fish, maybe you're trying to eat more beans and legumes or more greens, you can map those out in your week so that you know you're hitting those numbers. Change isn't easy and it doesn't happen overnight. So what I want you to do is use this plan for the next four weeks. That will give you a better idea of what's working, what isn't, and what changes you need to make. After that, I want you to watch my Periodized Nutrition for Runners video. This will teach you all of the tips and tricks on how to dial it up a notch so you'll learn how to adjust your eating and fueling during different parts of your training cycle. Click here and I will see you in the next video. Fudge! Damn it. Crap! Here we go. Now I don't know what to do.